The Fossils Are Talking, a journey through time at the Bell Museum of the University of Minnesota with Holly Menninger, Director of Science Learning, and Elizabeth Shreve, author of Out of the Blue, How Animals Evolved from Prehistoric Seas. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Collections Cove in the Touch and See Lab at the Bell Museum. Today, we have a very special guest joining us uh, in a conversation and a visit to the museum. I'm pleased to welcome Elizabeth Shreve, who is the author of a new book all about evolution called Out of the Blue, How Animals Evolved from Prehistoric Seas. Welcome to the Bell Museum, Elizabeth. We're glad you're here. Great. Thank you so much. What a fabulous museum, and it's great to be here at Collections Co. Can you tell us a little bit about your where this book came from? I'm sure it didn't, maybe it came from out of the blue, but tell us a little <laughs> bit about what inspired you to write a children's picture book about evolution. Yeah. Well, I studied geology in college, uh, so I've always been interested in the history of life on Earth. But this book actually came almost like a homework assignment, believe it or not, from my agent, the person that helps me uh, get my books to publishers. And she said, how about a book called Out of the Blue uh, that covers the history of animals moving from ocean to land? And I said, well, that's the history of life on Earth. And she said, yeah, go for it. So I plunged in to many, many, many weeks of research so that I could remember uh, all I had ever known about that topic and also learn a lot more. What role did natural history museums play in your research, if they played a role at all in, in helping you organize your thoughts in the story of the book? Oh, huge role. Well, I, when I went to college, I actually worked at the Harvard Museum of Natural History and exhibits. But when I had to start this book, I went to friends at the California Academy of Sciences in San Francisco, which is where I, uh, which is where near where I live now. And they took me down in the collections and they kind of set me on the right path to learning what I needed to do. And then when it came around to making some videos that uh, you know, you've seen on my website, uh, they also provided me with interviews, which was really helpful. Awesome. Well, let's dive in. Tell us how, how do we how does the book start? Let's take us on this journey. Okay, well, so um, when I when I had steeped myself in research for the book, finally, finally, the story question came up. And that's what I always need to find is, what is the question that's gonna open the story? Uh, in this case, uh, I had this question. I'm gonna ask you to hold the book. You bet. Because we have some little friends here that are gonna cool. come to right. join us here. We're good, we have a hippo, and we have a dolphin, and we have a shark. And so the question at the opening of the book is, which two of these three animals are the closest relatives? Because when I found out the, the relationships of which two of these are the closest cousins, I was so surprised. And I thought kids might be surprised too. So I started to research that and that became the opening question of the book. And after I had the question, then everything kind of fell into place. So I was able to start writing and to start right back at the beginning with microbes, which the tiniest life form that uh, began in the oceans, life began in the oceans. And then gradually, after billions of years, uh, those little tiny cells got more complex until finally the first early animals came about. And this is a cast of a fossil called Charnia which was one of these early kind of squishy, strange life forms. They don't even know if it's really an animal or a plant. Uh, and then a really big explosion happened called the Cambrian explosion. And that period around 500 million years ago is when the major animal groups of our world took shape. And I think that you have some pretty cool fossils. We do, yeah. including, including some of my favorites. Uh, hit, hit, trilo trilobites. Trilobites. Let's go see some fossils. Sounds great. All right, Elizabeth, here we are. A bunch of fossils. And these fossils are from about 500 million years ago when Minnesota, much of the world, was covered by, by a big ocean. What do these fossils tell us about, about the evolution of life on Earth? Well, really, the fossil record is how we know what happened when. We know that the 
older fossils are going to be down at the, the lower strata, the lower layers of rock, and the more recent life forms are going to be on the top. So that helps us get the sequence of what happened when relative to each other. And then scientists can also date some of the other rock layers, and they can get precise dates on some of, some of those layers such as come from volcanoes. And that way they can set up the chronology, the timetable of life on Earth, which is pretty cool. And another thing that we see is that these don't look like anything that we have on Earth, like this trilobite that you're holding. Oh, those were very common for many hundreds of millions of years, starting in the Cambrian. And they were kind of like water bugs. Some were tiny and some were giant. And some with really big spines and armor. armor. They're one of my favorite fossils. Yeah, they're sure. so cool. And they evolved defensive uh, life body shapes and behaviors as predators became more fierce. So that was one of the uh, important fossils that we identify with the Cambrian. It's kind of an indicator fossil as it evolved through time. But all of this wonderful evolution was happening in the oceans and land was bare. So the very first evidence we have in the fossil record of an animal coming onto land was something like, perhaps like a little millipede. And that left tiny little footprints, little trackways, what we call trace fossils, along a shoreline. And that fossil was found in Scotland, actually, by a, a bus driver, amateur paleontologist. And that's the, uh, one of the earliest evidence so far, although, you know, who knows what we'll find next. And then after that, more animals started to come on land. But let's go over here and see what those looked like. Sounds good. So after that first little millipede wiggled onto the land, other types of arthropods, the animals with hard outside skeletons, also came from out of the ocean and onto the land. And food sources start to develop along the shoreline, different types of plants and little mossy jungles that the millipedes could live in. Um, some of those animals, like sea scorpions, evolved into giants, you know, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Great big guys, the Eurypterids, pretty scary stuff. And some of them evolved in some of the animals that we see here, including the horseshoe crab, for example, a relative of the sea scorpion, and also a relative of the trilobite, believe it or not. And that animal has hardly evolved much in, say, 430 million years or so. It hasn't changed all that much. And then other animals uh, in that arthropod group gave rise to, you know, butterflies and other insects. What about the animals with backbones? When did those start showing up on the scene? Oh, well, let's go check that out in the next room. Uh, so here we are in the fish rooms of the fabulous Bell Museum. You've had a pair of wonderful exhibits here that'll be on display until January 2nd, featuring specimens from your fish collection. One called Clear depicts dyed fish specimens. They're so bright and beautiful. And the other, courtesy of the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History, shows the complex bone structure of fish in dramatic detail, really gorgeous. And that structure is really important to us in understanding our own history because those were the first vertebrate animals that uh, evolved into forms that came onto land. And in fact, uh, fish evolved in a great abundance around 400 million years ago in what we call the age of fishes, appropriately, uh, the Devonian period. Some of them later became very large, like of course everybody knows Megalodon, which is the big shark, big, big old shark. But those were still, of course, living in the ocean. But things were getting kind of intense in the ancient seas in those days. A lot of competition, a lot of hunters and predators, so things were getting tough for, for fish. Like, what's a fish to do? So some of those fish got really big. Some of them got really hard to find. And then some of them started to wiggle onto land. They used their internal body structures to start to gulp air and extract oxygen from air instead of from the water. Um, and you can see as they evolved and came onto land how they're related to our bodies. They became what we call tetrapods, which are four-limbed animals. Right, yeah, let's do the tetrapod here, yeah. <laughs> so we have four limbs and we can see the fish inside us. Uh, for example, in our upper arm we have one bone, our, low, our forearm we have two bones, 
Then we have lots of little bones in our hands, and then we have digits, our fingers or toes, on our bodies. And fish have the same structures. Their fins became our four limbs, our teeth came from their scales, and their swim bladders evolved into our lungs. And did you know that fish get the hiccups? No. no. Yes. I mean, yes. Fish I get the hiccups. Fish now every time I get the hiccups. <laughs> That's right. And as um, those four-limbed animals came onto land, uh, of course, plants were evolving, and all kinds of arthropods were evolving, and other other food sources were evolving too on water. Uh, in the water and on land. So it's not like it stops in the ocean. It, evolution never stops, right? It just right. keeps going. But one very important development happened around this time. This is in the Carboniferous to the Permian period, say, you know, 300 million years ago or so. So you might wonder what this little th puppet is. Um, amphibians, as you know, lay their eggs in the water. But around this time, uh, another type of egg layers evolved. Uh, here you see this little, <laughs> this little yeah. baby dinosaur coming out. And he's coming out of a watertight egg. Mm -hmm. And this is a big deal because things are about to get pretty tough in the water and on land. He says, hi, but oh my gosh, things are about to get really bad. Yeah. Um, dinosaurs haven't yet evolved uh, at this time, but a, when a terrible event comes to the Earth called the Great Dying, the Permian Extinction, around 252 million years ago for a variety of reasons, including a lot of volcanic activity uh, in what is now Siberia. The water and the land were largely poisoned, and so we see that about 90% of land animals and 95% of ocean animals disappear wow. from this time. That's Incredible, right? Yeah, yeah, big extinction. Ah, it's really bad. So life did come back after that, and this is when we see the age that everybody likes. What do you think that age is called? Jurassic period? Yeah, the age of age of dinosaurs. Yeah, we got sort of a dinosaur-y kind of guy here. You always say like, you know, animals you might have heard talk, uh, talk about called the dinosaurs. Yeah, just those guys. So this kind of points out like how much history there was before the dinosaurs, right? right? That's right. right. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Um, so we had marine, giant marine reptiles in the water, and we had flying reptiles, the pterosaurs. On, in the air, but then disaster strikes again, oh no, and so much for the dinosaurs, an asteroid hits around 66 million years ago, and that allows oh, the age of the mammals to get started, and that family tree of mammals branches and branches and branches, and one part of the mammal group evolves into an animal called, called Pachycetus, and that's related to one branch goes to our friend, the hippo. The hippo! Yay, hippo! And the other branch of that particular family goes back to the sea. Mm. So that becomes the, which one do you think it is? I is it the shark? Is no, it the dolphin? I think it's the dolphin. It's the dolphin. Okay. Hello, cousin. Cousins. Hello, cousin. Hi, cousin. How are you doing? <laughs> So that is how we know that the dolphin, free-swimming animal in the sea, is related to that mud-loving hippo. And so that is how this book came together, asking that question, following the course of wonderful history of life on Earth all the way to the present, and you see here we are at there the very are. end. And if you come to the Bell Museum, you'll find out a lot more history and get to see a lot more fossils and wonderful information on life on Earth. Wonderful. Thank you, Elizabeth, so much. Where can our uh, visitors and our friends find your book? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, you can find this book at any, you can order at any local bookstore or bookshop.org or in Amazon or hopefully soon in your gift hopefully store. Hopefully soon in our gift store. Yeah. Thank you. We really, really appreciate your visit. It was so fun spending time with you. Such afternoon. a pleasure. Thank you, Holly.